Hello everyone, this is Uxalef speaking. So, after April 15 I have logged on my trusted Elegance build and everything changed a bit. Even more condition builds, even more bunkers and far less bursty builds. Elegance was a good build and it suited me perfectly while it lasted, but as it stands now it won't work anymore. At least not on the level of the performance I expect it to. So it's time to return to Build Wars, as in creation of a build in the current meta. And this video is about showing you how I create builds, as in what do I look at to create a build. Ah yeah, here I make a mistake and I die on the video. Why did I lose this fight? Not enough condition removal. Well, there were more issues, but we will get to those. Let's make it simple for now. To fully understand the problem when I was fighting with this engineer in the last clip, let's show you the fight with a Mesmer in this clip. He is a great sword shutter build, while I am a staff, well not really shutter build. This means my opponent operates on two extremes of the range, close combat while immobilizing me and extreme long range combat. The build I am using uses staff, which is a short range weapon. Yes, combination of blink with hydromancy weapon swap and stuff gives me some form of snaring, but it is not enough against a mesmer. To put it blunt, my combination of weapons, stuff and sword focus, is kiteable. Stuff gives me some nice escape and kiting options, especially due to stuff too, and the clones deal n quite a lot of damage, yes clones, not only the phantasm, but in the end it is not enough if enemy wants to kite me. The fact Staff has very long cooldowns and Illusionary Warlock is very easy to avoid by stepping away doesn't really help. In short, Staff works when your enemy is immobile or when enemy fights you in short range. Without chaotic interruption, Staff doesn't deal enough damage to stand on its own. Engineers are a prime example of the class which wants you at close combat to chase them, so they are able to put bombs on you and grenades from the short range. In this video I am going with a different trait distribution, 4, 2, 4, 4, 0. Basically, I am trying to stack a lot of vulnerabilities through dazes from Chaos Storm to compensate lack base damage on a staff. As the main problem from the staff is that Warlock never connects and enemy is able to kite me, I have used Crippling Dissipation in place of Chaotic Interruption. But the main problem still remains. If you see this video, I have to run after Engineer, so Engineer is the one who is in control of the fight. I don't like that. There is also one major problem here. Perfect, I've got a great build with very efficient clones when they die, but I don't have clone generation. So as long as I want to have crippling dissipation and debilitating dissipation in a power build, I absolutely require deceptive evasion. So I am married to 20 in dueling. Uh, sorry, 4 in dueling, according to new system. Because of low condition removal of the build I am using right now, I have died to a dire thief with a pistol. This should never happen, it is unacceptable. Reflect Mesmer dying to a pistol condition thief should never happen. This is it then, the drawing board of a Mesmer. I always play with Warden's feedback and Bountiful Interruption, so those two are a must. Bountiful Interruption gives me a lot of mites, which I absolutely require now with less damage. If I go hybrid, as I usually do, I would like to have debilitating dissipation, but then I am married to deceptive evasion. You have seen the experiments, clone generation is absolutely required in this type of build. I could also go Illusions 15, but there is no synergy between other stuff I want. Now, I've got two adept slots which I can fill somehow, but let's not do it yet. If I want to use the staff at higher efficiency, I need either chaotic interruption or my favorite crippling dissipation. Unfortunately, to utilize staff fully, I would love to have domination free for the vulnerability stacking, otherwise the damage simply isn't there. And yeah, remember that problem with Condition Dire Thief and the Engineer from the beginning? I need a Condition Removal tool aside in Alfield. But then what I have is Portal on 90 seconds cooldown. It is acceptable if you are porting golems, it is horrible in roaming if this is your decoy tool. So it kind of means I need to get Glamour Mastery as well, which marries me to 04460. And well, I was always making a mobility mesmer, right? So I need far-reaching manipulation for Blink. This build created that way has a lot of very powerful synergies and it works both on staff and on a greatsword. 
What I also get is higher phantasm damage, which is never a bad thing, especially after ferocity nerf. Of staff vs greatsword, staff deals more damage in this build, because mites give condition damage too and staff clones apply conditions. An example of the fight in this build using a staff. Portal is used as both diversion and outmaneuvering tool. Attacking a ranger first, I didn't notice that engineer is underleveled, when I noticed I've changed targets. As you can see, Temporal Curtain has been used to create a distance between me and my opponents, even if they didn't fire, I have crippled a pet. I am standing out there in the open inside Warden to reflect as many of the hits as possible, but they are not firing at me, while Nullfield simply protects me from conditions. When the ranger pushed me back, I make a move. I feint being panicked, port back, mass invis myself, return through the portal being invisible. This opened an engineer to me without ranger protection. This means I am able to stick to him like a glue, attack him using hydromancy and standard attacks. Deceptive evasion gives me a lot of clones. Clones are my healing power if I'm using Aetherfeast. On top of that, clones allow me distortion shutter and other shutters. As Ranger was far away from me, I bought myself some time blinking away and used Blood Frenzy to buy time and avoid the attack from the pet. And the rest of this fight became quite simple right now, because I have a great build advantage over this Ranger. What you can clearly see is that I really lack something like chaotic interruption. Enemy is moving all the time and I can't really stop him in one spot. So although staff variant works, it is a very defensive variant. I would switch to it if I attacked a camp or a tower solo, or if I was in a larger party and the party required some kind of support. But this build works the best with the greatsword. It seems that the most enemies I kill in this video are engineers, no matter. This video shows the difference between the greatsword and the staff versus an engineer. The beginning is the same, I am using sword focus as my main weapon and he tries to pollute me with the conditions. I put up a null field, time passes and I need to endure this barrage for a while. But then the engineer changes his kit and I am able to change my weapon to the greatsword and the fun starts. Staff is more subtle of a weapon in terms of how does it work, it is more of an attrition weapon. Greatsword is a pure burst option. As you can see I have forced my opponent to use the crate on a particular spot, not even to attack me, and now I am able to blink away and kite him. Look at his passive hit points. The so-called pathetic bleeds on a berserker build are able to offset his regeneration and even more damage him. Some of those bleeds come from the clones, but some come from the crits, from berserker and the clones. He pulled me into the null field, but once again look at the bleeds at him right now. I can offset his regeneration. So greatsword gives me kite ability, which combined with my mobility is quite a good thing to have. And bountiful interruption makes my bleeds still relevant. Greatsword has something staff lacks, the party burst. People we are fighting right now are not a tanky, I think they are just a random group of people who wanted to have some fun together in world vs world, so the damage numbers we can see are really high. I mean, usually you don't see people losing hit points like that, like in this fight. Anyway, I am using mass invisibility through portal here to be able to let Sprout get invisible, and then to select a vulnerable target to burst him down. I kind of hoped that enemy would congregate on the fallen and lie and I would be able to kind of lay waste on our enemies. But well, they have banners. So, this confused me, I blinked a bit too far away, I mean I needed to look at the situation, but on the other hand I put myself in quite a useless position. Here an important observation. Greatsword has much smaller possibilities of creation of interrupts compared to this stuff. Well, while I was sniffing flowers here, Drew was fighting hard against them and he cast Entangle skill. Well, this was a game changer as both he is a burst ranger and I am a burst mercer right now. We have managed to exceed the critical mass of enemies being downed, they have congregated in one spot and I was able to use the power of Berserker, especially powered by the mites I have generated earlier. As you can see it doesn't mean that Burst is dead. Even after the Ferocity nerf, Burst is still viable. What is more, the more bursty players are in the party, the better it scales. You will see it in the last video when one bursty player would defeat us. 
It's okay, simply believe us that we have managed to kill them all, the ones who are down. Okay, thanks. Next video. On the thief forums they say that to defeat a thief you need to outkite the thief. Usually it is very difficult, if not impossible, but in this particular build with great sword it becomes possible. The first thing I absolutely need to kill is the veteran guard. A wrong timed stun or immobilize might give the thief a victory over me. I have the feeling that thief thinks the same, so he tries to kill the guard as well. Now, I have a problem here. I see shadow refuge popping up. In the perfect situation I should run one direction to make thief follow me to lose some initiative and stuff, but I want to hunt the thief down and he might not want to attack me. So I need to eat his burst, I can't predict it, in order to become a juicy target. Now he has 5 seconds, so I can bait him using Blood Frenzy. Sometimes it works. And time for a key to defeating thieves, phantasms. If the thief wants to hit me, he needs to come close and personal. Well, aside ranged thieves, but those I can reflect using focus. If enemy thief wanted to win, at this moment he should either disengage and break combat at all, or he should focus phantasms and try to kill them. Now, I have no idea where the thief is, but my phantasms will see him first, if you know what I mean. I can watch phantasms and follow them. So, phantasms are your resource in fighting against a thief. Well, warlocks or wardens won't hit a thief. And when a thief tries to escape, you've got greatsword, which is a sniper weapon. With stuff, this would be impossible. Sometimes mirror matches go a bit strange. I have lost MOA 5 skill, which made me kind of vulnerable, and Immobilize didn't help over here too, but I managed to survive the initial strike. To be honest, this was a mistake, I should first use Portal then Blink. On the other hand, I got what I wanted, I outranged him, so I was able to buy some time for myself. Another mistake was turning around, I could run a bit more. I am slightly too hot blooded for fights like this, I wanted to fight him, not to run run and return when I am ready. At least, even if I made so many mistakes, I used distortion correctly and then followed with blood frenzy. I pretended I am starting to heal, I broke it to avoid an interrupt and I blinked away. It was an extremely risky maneuver, but I got lucky. And now you know why far reaching manipulations is so powerful of a trait. A random hint, to avoid Luvenary Berserker, dodge towards it. Right now we are in a situation when the fight kind of reset. My opponent managed to protect his heal with distortion, so I wasn't able to interrupt him. Now, you can see that I am being pounded all the time, but I don't really care because I can use Aether Feast with free clones and heal to full. I am not sure what type of build my opponent had, but it was neither a Fatter nor a Phantasm build. Since I started using Bountiful Interruption, I am able to reliably kill Prismatic Understanding Mesmers. The reason is simple, I am using Focus to interrupt the clones and generate a lot of mites. Once again you can see 4 bleeds overpowering enemy regeneration. And with 16 mites, a burst from a greatsword is simply deadly to a light armor class. Word of warning, this clip is accelerated by 20%. Now, what we have here? We've got a Conditioned Thief, two Conditioned Mesmers and a Guardian. Bunker, not Condition. So, three Conditions and a Bunker try to take the camp and this clip I hope shows why, in my opinion, going pure Condition is unviable. I mean, sure, I've got confusion and a lot of other unpleasant things. But let's look at it this way. There are four enemies who are trying to take a camp and there are two defenders and a camp. No, we can't kill them. But can they kill us? We know we are in condition meta. I've got two sources of condition removal. T has a condition removal when she goes invisible. Now you can see that Mender's Purity ripped confusion and stuff from me. When T has problems, she goes to the back and I go to the front. When I have problem, I go to the back and T goes to the front. If they had one bursty player, I mean one of those four who was able to deal any damage, we would be done for. There are powerful only condition classes. Those can generate lots of might by themselves, or can control and burst with condis. Extremely low on hit points, I had to run away from enemy thief underwater. T was left with 3 enemies and she managed to survive. Because of YouTube 15 minutes limit, I fight with the thief, thief runs outside of the water on the land, I follow, we have a fight over there, all of us, and the commander comes and saves us. So, Irksal is out.